say we're too... Hey everybody, how you doing? You got Jim and James here from Cherokee Nation Radio. And today in the studio, we've got Haley Verrill, a Canadian country music artist that's really getting hot and rising up on the scene. She signed with Steam Whistle Records and Dan Knight, and she is really burning up the charts, guys. How you doing today, Haley? I'm doing great, James. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you for coming in today to let some of our listeners know about you and learn a little bit about uh, Steam Whistle Records and and Haley Verrill. Thank you for having me. Hey, no problem. Glad to have you here. Hey, Haley, well, let's start out with one little simple question. Why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? So I'm a 23-year-old right from the heart of Burlington, Ontario in Canada, and I've been doing music ever since I was a little girl. So what's really cool is that when I was younger, I always sang with my dad in his truck. So he'd always play his barbershopper tapes and we'd be harmonizing with each other. So I grew up listening to music and going to country and bluegrass festivals. And ever since I started my story of singing for smiles, where I go around to different retirement homes and sing country classics, I've really found a love for music. Awesome, that is so great. So, uh, I, I'm going to ask you the next question, but you pretty much answered it. What you got <laughs> into? Uh, got you interested in country music, but hey, singing in your dad's truck, I kind of answered that question. Um, I noticed earlier, I was looking around on your Facebook page, and it says you got nominated for the Josie Music Award. Why don't you tell our listeners what it feels like to get nominated for that award, and what is the Josie Music Award? So what's really awesome about being nominated for an award is being recognized for the passion and the work I do in the music industry. The Josie Music Awards started with, with a sis, I believe two sisters, and what's really awesome is that they're working together on recognizing independent artists. And what's really cool is being able to meet other independent artists and be able to just share my music with as many people as possible. So being nominated is so amazing because I get to share my talent and see that it's going somewhere. Awesome, that's great. Now, um, a lot of it, some of our listeners already know the music you have out, but uh, why don't you tell our listeners what songs you have out and um, have you got any new ones getting ready to come out? Well, as we speak, I'm currently working on a new one with a really cool producer. I can't talk too much details about it as we're still working on it. But there's new music coming out, and I just want to share that, that I'm still working, despite what's going on in the world. I'm still trying my best. And so far, in January, I released a four-song EP called Listen, Basement Sessions, that was recorded with my boyfriend's band, Lens. And that was really cool being able to push that out. And then back in July of 2019, with Catching Waves, I released Like You Mean It, Canada-wide. And then just this year in May, I released Like You Mean It with Dan Knight and Steam Whistle Records worldwide. Awesome. Great. And now, I noticed you mentioned something, and um, I've read up about it, but uh, a lot of our listeners probably don't know what it is. Why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about what Singing for Smiles is? So Singing for Smiles was something I created in my third year of college. We had a program where, in a class where we had to work and create something for the whole semester. And people were creating albums, singles. And I was thinking to myself, I want to do something different. Everybody's kind of doing the same thing, but I want to do something that I can use for the rest of my life. So often experience that I had, my grandma had suffered from a stroke in her retirement home that she was in and we didn't know how much she had left. And I knew my dad's mom, so her and his dad, grew up singing and taught him how to sing. So I wanted to celebrate the end of her life by singing. So in the home, I pulled up the guitar and I just started singing. I sang a whole bunch of music and just seeing her smile, seeing her face light up, I just knew that music was my purpose. And that's how Singing for Smiles kind of started. So now I go to different retirement homes and nursing homes and just sing old country classics because I love just seeing the smiles on people's faces. Awesome. That's a way to give back it up. You know, it's really nice to hear that a lot of our listeners like to know that these 
artists that we interview are pretty much down home and just normal citizens just like ourselves i mean they just they they're, they're trying to make bring smiles to people's faces and it's something i wanted to get out there Haley, is showing what you're trying to give back from your music yeah that's and, all i really want to do is right. just inspire as many people as possible Awesome. Now, let me ask you a question. I usually ask most of the artists I interview this, and I just want to know what your feelings are. What do you think of today's country sound versus the classic country sound like Patsy Cline, Loretta Lynn, people like that? What do you think of the difference? I really enjoy singing old country classics. I love the storytelling. I love the sound of the dobros, the banjos, just the raw instruments. I feel like now... Some of the music is really good still. I'm more I'm more of a person, I don't listen to the sound, I listen to the lyrics. Right. Um, but with the sound, I felt classic country is more raw and the newer country we hear today is a lot of electronic instruments. Right, right, and that's, to me, that's the thing. I'm like you, I feel like that, you know, we need to, uh, we need to have uh, more of the old classics because uh, Cherokee Nation Radio we play a lot of the old classics like Ronnie Millsap and George Jones and Waylon Jennings and we get more reviews and raves for the old classic than we do for the new and a lot of our listeners have told us they like you know the new country isn't really more country it's more country pop and we'd rather hear the old classics and I'm like yeah hey that's what we love too so that's good to hear now, I was going to ask you this question, but um, from what I've read up about you, Haley, uh, it's already been asked, but, but we've gotten, when we've played your song, like, Like You Mean It, we've heard from people that have emailed us and said, hey, you know what, she's got a voice like Patsy Cline, or she sounds like almost like a Roseanne Cash. I was going to ask you, what country music artists do people who hear you say your voice sounds like? But, um, so were those two... Patsy Cline and Roseanne Cash kind of a big influence on you for getting into country music or singing? What's really cool is those artists weren't really the ones that got me into it. It was actually Dolly Parton. Oh, Listening God. to her, I saw her live once and just seeing her stage presence and she sounds the exact same live as she does on recordings. Right, right. Okay. Well, you're talking to somebody that's originally from Tennessee. I'm from Sevierville, Tennessee, and Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg out there. And, you know, one day, you know, hey, you saw her live. Maybe I'll have to, we'll be, I'll get you and your boyfriend to hook up with me and my wife, and I'll take you to Tennessee and introduce you to Dolly face to face. How would you like that? I would love to. That's amazing. That's <laughs> yeah, my dream to is to meet her one day. <laughs> hey, hey, that's no problem. I go to Dollywood all the time down there and. Pigeon Forge and and Dolly's usually in presence there at Dollywood, her amusement park right there in in Pigeon Forge. So hey, it wouldn't be uh, it wouldn't be very hard to introduce you to her face to face. That would be amazing. Yeah, she's definitely a great songwriter and has such a great personality. She does. Dolly's really sweet. She's very down home. Um, just like when they had the big fires out there and and Benjamin Boards in Gatlinburg, she donated a lot of her own money to help those people rebuild. Yes, and she also has books for children too, which I really yes, like. She does, yes, Dolly's really getting, she's really giving back. She's not one of these artists that, that kind of gets above their, her fan base. She knows her fans are the ones that made her and put her where she's at, and she really recognizes a lot of them. That's what I love about her. Exactly. Now let me ask you, um, how did you learn your skills on the guitar? How did you learn how to play it? So what's really funny is when I was 12 years old, that's when I first got my guitar. And my dad played guitar for a while, and he taught me only one chord. And to this day, I'm better than him, and I make fun of that for him. (laughs) I'm sure your dad kind of likes that, you make fun of him that you're better on the guitar than he is. Yeah, and I never took any lessons. So the way I learned it, and if anybody that's listening wants to learn something or learn an instrument, just Google it, YouTube. That's what I did, basically. And whenever I went to any festivals, I always play by ear and I look at people's hands. And in bluegrass festivals, we always sit in a circle and we jam. So when I was playing, I'd look at people's fingers and just learn the chords that way as well. Awesome. That's cool. That's very cool. Yeah, we work a lot with um, 
the reason we got to know you and um we work a lot with Dan Knight and Nashville Country Music Magazine and Steam Whistle Records. We work hand in hand with them. We work with a few other record companies too, but uh, Dan's a big supporter of Cherokee Nation Radio, and that's how we learned about you and Bernie Grass and Chris Mab and 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 Cherokee Nation Radio kind of wanted to give back to Dan for everything he's done for us, and we want to interview a lot of his artists. That's why we're starting out with a lot of the Steam Whistle Records artists. Um, if now one question if you could meet any artist country music or otherwise that's dead or alive who would it be and the second part of that question is what one question would you ask him if you had the opportunity there are so many artists that i want to meet there's like patsy klein johnny cash all those older artists and even dolly parton that's who's still alive i just want to ask them how did you come up with your songs? Oh, man. You know, and now that you say that, that's a good question. I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, that kind of popped in my head when we were talking about that. Now, that's the question I've got for you, for our listeners. How did you come up with your songs? There are so many ways I came up with my songs. When I first started writing, I was just writing because I wanted to write. But now, after experiencing so many things, not only being in the industry, but experiencing love, experiencing going to school, experiencing bullying. I started writing about that and just writing about things that I experienced, maybe others have experienced, and just seeing on the social media world. I just kind of write to inspire people now instead of just writing to write. I want to write for a purpose. Oh, man, Haley, I'm going to tell you what. Our listeners are really going to love you after this interview goes public because I'm going to tell you what, there's Cherokee Nation Radio. We uh, pride ourselves on being anti-bullying. We stand up for the little guy, and and we speak out against that a lot. We don't get a lot of uh, very political on our station, but I can tell you what, when it comes to bullying, we're very big, proud supporters of the anti-bullying campaign that's going on. Now... What To show our listeners that you're just a normal person like they are, in your spare time when you have free time, what are some of your favorite leisure time activities? I love playing basketball. (laughs) Really? I don't play it, like, really well, but something I do play well, because I do like sports, is I I used to be part of a five-pin bowling league. I used to go nationally and bowl in tournaments. Wow, that is awesome to know. Well, Jam and James, I, trust me, I, I bowl on a league every Saturday night. I've been into bowling since I was young. So, hey, we got something in common there. I love hey. the 10 pin bowling that we call I'm not good at 10 pin, <laughs> only 5 pin. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, do, I do pretty well. I'm not great, but hey, I do well. <laughs> now, what do your parents think of your career choice, and how do they kind of support you in this choice? My parents have been so supportive because they've been, not in the music industry, but they've been in the church choir. So they know a lot about singing and music. And my dad used to be part of a barbershop or chorus. Awesome. And he used to travel and everything. And then he gave up that because he had to come home and make money for the family. Right. And he kind of knew that. And he wanted us and my sister to pursue our dreams and... Before, I I talk about this a lot, I used to want to be a veterinarian. And I was bullied and told that I wasn't smart enough to become a veterinarian. So being young and listening to those that I believed that were telling me the right things, I gave up that and I started just doing music because that's something I felt I was really good at. Yeah, would it be nice to go back now with these people that that are bullying you, that used to bully you when you were growing up and say, hey, look at me now. You said I wasn't smart enough to do this and now look at me. I'm a recording music artist and I've got my own music playing on stations across the country and all across Canada. How you like me now? <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't change it for a thing because I, I love doing music and that's something I really am passionate about. Well, Haley, I'll tell you what, when I do my show today, I'll have to dedicate a song to you. It's uh, uh, uh Toby Keith, how do you like me now? I'm going to have to dedicate oh, yeah. that to you. <laughs> I like that song. I listen to it all the time. <laughs> awesome, awesome. That's great. So let me ask you. Um, I noticed that a lot of the artists that 
Dan Knight has sent me are from Canada itself. Now, uh, the reason I say that is country music like a big draw in Canada? It actually is. People think because it, we're just the northern country, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> that we do a lot of different kinds of music, but Canada has a lot of country artists. Wow. And that's really cool. Where I'm from, Burlington, there is a lot of country artists too. Mm, and I, awesome. I really enjoy meeting them. Like the more I connect with people on Facebook, the more competitions I do, I just see more and more country artists pop up and it's really cool that we have such a great big country area here. Awesome, that's cool to know. You'll have to send some of these country artists you know they're from Burlington and tell them to get in touch with me in my email and maybe we'll do a interview with some of them too. <laughs> <laughs> And, and please, pass the word about Cherokee Nation Radio because we'd love to, you know, get more of a Canadian presence on our station. And believe me, we got a lot right now, especially when they're finding that we're playing people like yourself and the other country artists that we interviewed for Dan Knight. We're getting a very big Canadian presence that's popping in. But I've noticed also on our station when I look at the historical records of people tuning in, Country music is a big European attraction right now. People love American country music for some reason. And it's just, since we decided to go all country, it's like our station has boomed. And it's like, wow, I didn't know country was that big of a draw in European countries and Canada and all that. And it's just, they're, it's off the wall. And I'm like, wow, the listener base is going crazy. Um, yeah, I love being part of this genre. It's amazing, especially when country was built on songwriting and yeah. talking about the songs. Right. And that's what I like about country music, because country music kind of tells more of a story. It's, it's uh, you know, it's not, it's not what I call the filth nowadays in some of the songs that are out here. It's kind of a more of a person putting their feelings into the music and, and basically kind of like uh, telling a story, I mean, their life or somebody else's life. And nine times out of ten, I have found a country music song a lot of people can relate with what that songwriter or that artist is singing about. They can relate to it. Yeah, and that's what really got me into country music. And, And now, I used to be into the melody and I wasn't listening to the lyrics all the time when I was younger. But now... I like pop country, and I like old country. Mm -hmm. Not just because of the sound, but the lyrics. I like being able to imagine something or feel something in a song. And that can be for any genre too. I don't don't hate any genre. I love just listening to the lyrics and learning about somebody, learning about somebody's life, or just learning about just the genre itself. Right, exactly. And and that's the thing we have learned. It's, you know, we started out as a, a rock station kind of 50s station we still play a few little 50s here and there but since we turned over to primarily country it's like we have gotten rave reviews about this stuff and it's and you know we just we're not sorry we ever did that um now in history if you could do a duet with any artist that you could have your heart desire. Somebody come to you and said, hey, Haley, I want you to do a duet with this artist. If they gave you that choice, who would it be and why? Ooh. Now, there's a male one I want to work with, and that would be Johnny Cash. Ooh. Ooh. Because people say I remind them of Roseanne Cash, so that would be so cool to be able to be a part of that. Right. And there's so many other artists I want to be a part of. Like, there's newer pop country artists... There's other classic country artists that I want to take part in, and it's so cool. Well, hey, Hank Williams Jr. Uh, kind of uh, revolutionized that thing of doing duets because he never got to do a duet with his dad. But they have way now computer generated. You might be able to get your wish to do a, a duet with Johnny Cash, take one of his songs, and you'll sing in there with him because they have a way of doing computer generated. And Hank Williams Jr. did that with his dad, Hank Williams Sr., because he never got to do a duet with him, but he made a computer computerized generated video of him and him and his dad singing together. And that'd be something to look into. You singing with Johnny Cash, that would be awesome. That'd be pretty neat, yeah. Yes, that sounds so interesting. Yes, I'm going to have to look that up. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
And the one person that you know that actually showed up and 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 I noticed you mentioned something to her in your bio, and she's actually making us a jingle to go on our station, and that's Shania Twain. Um, that was one big Canadian artist that our listeners love, even after she got out of the music scene for a little bit. But but um, that's I think that's what kind of started the Canadian country music just boom with Shania Twain when she come out and it's just oh, oh man it's awesome I know I saw Shania Twain live and it was amazing being able to sing her songs when she sang one of her songs I was cheering up just listening to the lyrics and hearing her sing it it right. was so amazing right yes it is so let me ask you now if, if um if you could give advice to other younger generations uh, especially my daughter my 17 year old she wants to get into the country music business but and I kind of want to ask you this question for, as long as for her and other artists or listeners that may be listening in that want to break into country music what advice as someone is broken into this industry what advice would you give to the younger generation who wants to become a country music artist what kind of advice would you give them the advice I would give you, and what I started out, is go to open mics, connect with as many people as possible. You're gonna have some up and ups and downs. Being in the music industry is such a roller coaster ride. There's gonna be people that are gonna try and mess with you, screw with you, tell you no, but you just gotta keep pursuing it and do it because you love it. Don't do it because you think you're gonna make tons of money off of it because you might, you might not. And you got to do it because you love it. And try and become a songwriter. Do your own music. And that's why they call, I mean, and that's why I try to tell a lot of our listeners when we get emails about artists and are they getting popular. I like, I try to tell them that's why they call them starving artists. I mean, they, they, they're not going for the, the gusto or the money or the fame. They're doing it because they love what they do. And that's what makes a job really enjoyable is if you love what you do. That's why I got into radio and internet radio and interviewing because I love doing it. I love to entertain people. I love to, I don't have a voice. I mean, I sound like a hound dog baying at the moon if I tried to sing, wow. But, uh, <laughs> but I like to, in my way of being a DJ, I get to play these artists who have the great voices and entertain somebody for two or three hours a day. Yeah, and all you gotta do is just keep taking those opportunities because one day somebody who knows somebody may listen to that and be like, I need this person to hear this person. Right. Now, let me ask you this. Have you ever been to Nashville? I have plenty of times. I want to keep going back. Right. Okay. Okay. So, have you been down by the, uh, I can't remember the name of the street, I hadn't been in a long time. Um, there's one little street, um, it's called Music Row, I got it in my head. Um, there's a street down in Nashville called Music Row, and that's where all the aspiring country music artists actually play. Have you been down Music Row, and have you seen yes. any of those little bars and night spots there? I actually sang at the last bar that was there. Bobby's Idol Hour. Oh, yes, I know it well. I sang there. I sang a couple of songs. Unfortunately, I believe it, it, it shut down on Music Row, but I think it's somewhere else in Nashville now. Yes, it is. It is. It's somewhere else, but they shut it down on Music Row. Now, have you, have you ever been, have you visited the Ryman Auditorium or the Grand Ole Opry, you know, where they actually hold the Grand Ole Opry? Have you ever, when you went to Nashville, did you get a chance to visit there? I did. The first time I went to Nashville, I actually went to a Grand Ole Opry show. Awesome. And then the second time, I actually took a backstage tour and got my picture taken on that circle. <sighs> and my dream is to be able to sing on that circle in front of the audience where all those legends have sung before. Mm. I know that's kind of got to be a goosebump feeling standing on that circle knowing just how many greats have actually stood on that circle and did a show. I know, that is my dream, one day. Oh, you'll get there, Ailey. You've got a great voice. You'll be there very well, sooner than later, trust me. Now, Thank you. <laughs> with you, uh, bring in the mind with you saying you stood on that circle and got your picture taken. That's 
something I want to definitely ask you because that come to my mind. When you stood on that circle and actually took your picture, what did it feel like knowing how many historical figures that knowing that one of your your uh, uh, legends that you love, Patsy Cline, stood right on that circle and sang? That was such an inspiring moment for me. And I still have this picture to this day. And I want to hang it up in my room somewhere. And I just keep coming back to it and looking at it and just saying, one day I'm going to be on that stage and I'm going to be singing. That's right, Haley. Don't I just got to keep working. That's right. You keep on working at it because you're very good at your craft. And trust me, one day you're going to get that invite. Hey, Haley, why don't you come do the Grand Ole Opry? You'll get it. I, I know, and I it. heard... I heard well, my you, one of my bluegrass artists, Rhonda Vincent, <laughs> right, right. just became a member of the Grand Ole Opry, so that's pretty oh, cool. Oh, wow. Well, hey, put in for a membership. I guarantee you they listen to your music and they'll give you one. That's amazing. Yeah, I love it. Yes. Um, so now, now, uh, yeah, that's Jam and James is from Virginia, where I'm at. And um, have you ever had a chance? Now, you probably haven't. But um, right here where I live, about 30 minutes up the road, is Winchester, Virginia. That is actually where Patsy Klein got her start. I've done live shows from there, from the Patsy Klein Museum. My question is, have you ever gotten a chance to come to Virginia and go to Winchester and visit the Patsy Klein birthplace, the radio station where she got her start and her museum? I have not ever been to Virginia. I Ooh. want to. You ought to come on down. We love bluegrass and country here. And if you ever show up, me and my wife will gladly take you up to Winchester, Virginia and show you around and and let you actually uh, introduce you to one of the radio DJs that actually gave Patsy Klein. I've met him and interviewed him on air for the other, uh, the regular uh, FM station I was on. I interviewed him and I introduced you to the guy that gave Patsy Klein her very first start. The man's like 79 now, but he can remember the day that that young Miss Patsy Klein walked into his radio studio when she released her first single. And he's, he basically told her on the air, he goes, do you really think you're going somewhere? And she says, yeah, I hope so. And she kind of <laughs> sounded like you, but not long after that, not long, six weeks after that, her, sh- her song hook off and I believe if I'm not mistaken her first song was Walking After Midnight and that song yes. blew the charts apart oh yeah I love singing Walking After Midnight crazy all those lovely songs I just love the lyrics and the sound and her voice and her tone is yes. really really inspiring and I would love to meet you guys and Go down and see that. <laughs> hey, that sounds great. And I told Chris Mab and I told Bernie Grass, and what uh, Cherokee Nation Radio is trying to do right now is we're in the process of working with some promoters around here in Virginia and getting a location. And it may not be this year, it may be next year, but we're working out to do what we call a uh, Cherokee Nation Radio Presents the Country Music Festival. And basically what it'll be, it'll be held on a weekend. And what that's going to be is going to be independent artists coming down to Virginia in in a big... uh, Imposium, have people pay a few, you know, a price for some tickets and come in and listen to some great country music, get some great food, and spend a day of just listening to great country music. My thing for saying that is, um, would you be willing to come to Virginia to, to participate in that country music festival? I would love to. Awesome. Sounds great. We got Bernie Grass on board, got Chris Mab on board, got Dan Knight on board, and now we got Haley Verrill. Oh man, I'm just really excited now. This is really going to work out. I'm excited too. It gives, and I like that you're giving independent artists the opportunity to share their talent, because not a lot of people are doing that. They're just playing the people that are that have already made it. And that's where we set ourselves apart as Cherokee Nation Radio. We we recognize the fact that there are a lot of great country music artists out there who are independent. They're not with a major label. They're not with. BMI music and stuff like that but we wanted to give back to these artists who are struggling to try to get their music out so so people can hear these independent artists just how great they really are and that's why 
we play the independent artists. A lot of our songs, we have some mainstream artists who we play also, but we focus primarily on the independents. That's what we love playing. Well, that's amazing, and I applaud you for that, and I'm proud of you for doing that, because that's hey, really amazing. That's no problem. You, trust me. And, and like I said, um, also I wanted to tell you, Haley, if you'll send me some information on Singing for Smiles, send me like a logo if you've got of it or something like that or some information on it what i shall do is i will put it on our website so pe more people can learn about singing for smiles and the Haley vero foundation i'll call it awesome yeah on my website if you go to my website i actually have a singing for smiles tab okay. and if you click that there's two videos awesome. one that tells you why i started singing for smiles okay and one that talks about what it is and what I do. And they're both videos. And okay. what's really cool about the one that talks about what it is, is what I created a video where I was taping in, in homes that let me tape. Because some of them didn't want that because they don't want some of the elderly on video because some of the elderly aren't doing well. Right. But okay. being able to film and just show me playing live, the smiles and people singing along, that is something I really loved. So I can send that to you. I can send you that tab so you can link that if you want. Oh, I would love to, Haley. I would love to give some notoriety for your singing for smiles because I just love that. Just listening to it, listening to you describe it to me, man, it really makes me want to, you know, support it. And, and Cherokee Nation Radio wants to support it as hard as we can. And, and like I said, send me some more of your songs. Like, um, I'll try I'll try to get some from Dan, but like, uh, you ain't seen trouble yet. You haven't seen trouble yet. Songs like that so I can add some more music to your repertoire. Uh, repertoire. I'll get it out in a minute. Can't talk here. On Cherokee Nation Radio. That way I can play more because we're getting emails from people like, do you have any more Haley Vero? Um, what other songs have you got to hear? Play another one. Play this. And so, I mean, you're getting rave reviews on Cherokee Nation Radio just as Chris Mab and Bernie <laughs> Grass are. Your our, our listeners are sending me emails every day and like, well, what new song does Haley Vero coming out? I'm like, look, I don't know yet. I'll ask her in the interview. But like <laughs> you said, you don't want to release it until people hear it. You don't want to give out the yeah. 411 on it. So what's actually really cool is I just released with Dan Knight again and Steve Moser Records um, a classic country kind of song I wrote called Daddy. Mm. So no, I don't know if that's been that. sent to you yet or if you've seen it yet. No, it has not been there. I've got Like You Mean It. That's the one I got that Dan sent me. But yeah, please send me Daddy to, through my email and trust me, yeah. I've got a show today at 3.30. It will be played. Trent Keller. Yeah, I can send it to you as quickly as I can right after this interview. That sounds great. All right, Miss Haley, I thank you for stopping in the studio, and we'll end it up here and give you some time to spend some more leisure activities with your boyfriend and go do something fun with him rather than sit here in a studio and talk <laughs> to an old DJ. But you know what? I love it. It's something I love to do. Hey, I love to great. sit here, we chat with people, meet people, and get the audience listening to who I am. Hey, that's all right. We love to interview you guys because... You and all the rest of Canadian artists we've interviewed, y'all have been so hospitable. I mean, just great interview, just a great person to talk to. And that's with the rest of the artists that signed with Steam Whistle Records and Dan Knight. And I'm going to tell you what, we're still going to continue to do them. And we love your music and continue to keep on striving on with your music. Thank you for having me, James. I really appreciate it. Hey, that's no problem, Miss Haley. Hey, this is Jam and James and Cherokee Nation Radio, and you've been listening to my interview with the Canadian rising country music artist, Haley Vero. If you haven't listened to Haley's music, you don't know what you're missing. It's a treasure. It's a golden nugget that you just haven't dug up yet. She's got songs out like Like You Mean It, which is an awesome song. And she's got a new one that will probably be debuted today on Cherokee Nation Radio on my show, and it's called Daddy. So hey, if you haven't heard her music, tune in to CherokeeNationRadio.com through our chat room and listen in and listen to some great treasures that you may be missing. storm that does 
doesn't make me feel better When you're not there to keep me warm We've been together for years Now something else is on your This isn't how I 